Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to mix some henna paste. I know I have other henna paste mixing videos on my channel, but this one's going to go a little bit more in depth, and this will be part of the Henna for Beginners series, and I hope it'll be helpful for all of you. I will answer a lot of questions that I get in the comments section and by email, so I hope that this video will be uh, really helpful for those who are new to henna or who are mixing paste on their own for the very first time. So let's go ahead and go over the list of things that we're going to need to get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the most important ingredient, and that is henna powder. This is my Rajasthani henna powder available at freehemmindy.net. Though if you don't have this henna powder, you can get started with any other henna powder you might have. I highly recommend Jamila as well for beginners. Both of them are very, very easy to use. And so I highly recommend starting out with fresh henna powder and it's the essential ingredient to mixing henna paste. Henna powder comes from a specific plant and the plant is called Lawsona nermis. That's the Latin name for that plant, though I may be mispronouncing it. I'll put a link in the information box below if you're watching this on YouTube, then you can read more on that plant. I'm really not going to go into too much depth about the plant itself. But basically, the plant is grown in parts of Asia and Africa and the Middle East. And once the plant matures, the leaves are harvested from the plant. They're dried out and then ground down into a fine powder. Those leaves from that plant do contain a dye content, and when you put it on your skin, it turns a red, orange, or brown color, which is what we see when we put henna designs on our skin. So you can't just go and get henna from any plant. You can't just go out into a bush in your yard unless that bush happens to be a henna plant and um, go and take the leaves and grind them down. It just doesn't quite work that way. And henna is also not something that you can just pull spices out of your cabinet and throw together and, and make henna powder. That's not exactly how it works. And I, I specifically reference that because I do get a lot of questions from people who live in places where they where henna is not easily accessible and they're unable to order henna from the internet. And so if you're unable to get henna, you're, you may not be able to make henna paste. Um, and I highly recommend um, if you have a friend in a country where henna is easily available, ask them to send some to you. Or if you happen to have a friend or family member who is traveling to a country or a, um, or a city or state in which henna is easily accessible, ask them to bring some back for you. If you're unable to order it on the internet or you don't have a local Indian or Middle Eastern grocery where you can purchase it from. One of the most important things is starting out with fresh henna. This is the Rajasthani henna that I have available at freehandmindy.net and it's uh, one of the freshest crops that is available. And it's important to have fresh henna because you don't want to work with henna that's old. It tends to be stale and it will not, it will not stain very well on the skin. So that is the most important ingredient. And next let's talk about some of the liquids that you need to mix it into paste. So here I have water, I have lemon and lime juice, and then I also have some tea bags here. And these are just plain Lipton tea bags. They're not anything special or unique. And really it's up to you, your personal preference on what you'd prefer to use. I personally mix a 50% um, water, 50% lemon juice, and I don't always squeeze it from a fresh lemon. Sometimes I will buy it bottled from the store, but if you are going to squeeze it from a lemon, um, make sure that you take the, the pulp and the, um, the uh, seeds out before you use the juice itself but I prefer to um, do a 50-50 mix, but you can use only water or only lemon juice or only lime juice or um, just tea if you want or do a mixture of um, all of these. But it's, it's simply up to you, but I highly recommend starting out with just water or just lemon juice or a mixture of the two since they're pretty easily available in your local supermarket. And... <clears throat> Then we have two additional ingredients. So I've got plain white table sugar here, which is easily, easily available in your grocery or supermarket, and then essential oil. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about essential oil because I get a lot of questions about essential oil. Now, essential oil is an oil that's distilled from a plant. And it's not like cooking oil. I get a lot of questions 
about, well, can I use argan oil? Can I use vegetable oil? Can I use olive oil instead? No, they are not the same thing. Um, essential oils are oils distilled from a plant, like I said before. And the oils that I highly recommend for henna are tea tree, lavender, hedgeput, and uh, let's see, what's the other one? Oh, and eucalyptus. So I, I rec highly recommend those four oils. You don't have to use all of them at the same time. You can use one, it's per it's perfectly fine. Tea tree oil is pretty easily available in supermarkets, so the price will range on it. And some of the um, essential oils are more expensive than others. Some of them are cheaper, some of them are more expensive. Um, if you're looking to watch your budget, I highly recommend starting with um, eucalyptus or tea tree. And then lavender and kajaput tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side. But if you're not making large batches of henna paste, then just a small bottle should do you just fine. And so highly recommend using this. If you have any questions for me in regards to essential oils, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and put a comment down in the box below or send me an email at um, info at freehemmindy.net. And essential oils are available on my website as well. So if you are having a difficult time finding them locally, you can order them online. Uh, you can also find them in a grocery store if you have a natural health store or um, I know we in the U.S. we have Whole Foods. Um, they do sell essential oils there. So they're not in, impossible to find. You just have to search. And um, I'll go ahead and put a link in the information box as to what um, essential oils are. And um, that way it'll be clear for you. So I hope I don't get any more questions about using baby oil or <laughs> argan oil or cooking oil. It's, it's not the same. Just like the oil that you put in your car is... Um, not the same as the oil that you cook your food with. They they do have that common um, word in their name, in their title, oil, but they're all very different, and essential oil is, is very different from the oils that you cook with. So I'm going to go ahead and get started in mixing, so I will be right back, and we will go over the ins and outs of making henna paste. Okay, so I've got my henna powder here ready to mix. I have approximately, I'm going to say this is... Uh, going to be a little over 25 grams. It's approximately 25 grams. I mix my henna in small batches usually. It gives me a uh, better quality control and if I mis make a mistake it's easier to fix um, and I highly recommend that you do that as well. So what I do is I put my henna in a bowl. This is a ceramic bowl that I use for mixing henna all the time. It has a little handle on the side so I can easily grip it and walk around and mix henna and do what I need to do without um, dropping the bowl. And then I use this plastic spatula that I purchased at the grocery store. And I'm just um, mashing the henna down to make sure that I've removed any chunks. The henna that I used is vacuum packed to keep it fresh for an extended period of time. And so I just want to make sure that all of those lumps and bumps are gone before I start mixing. Um, there is another process that you may need to do such as um, straining or sifting your henna powder. Though most henna that is exported to the US usually is already sifted so you're not going to find any leaves or plant bits in it but in the event that you do I do have videos on how to do those and I also have blog articles on how to sift and strain your henna so I'll go ahead and link those down below but I won't be including them in the video so now that my henna powder looks pretty smooth it should be the consistency of talcum powder very silky smooth and the henna is triple sifted and very finely milled Let's go ahead and add some liquid to it. So I'm going to do a mixture of water and lemon juice. And the consistency that we're looking for is mashed potatoes or toothpaste. So I'm not going to give you exact measurements on how much you should put in because it's going to be different. It's going to differ on the type of henna you use. It's going to differ based upon your climate and the weather. Um, there are so many things, so many factors that can change how much liquid you need to put into your henna powder. So what we're looking for is the consistency. So when your henna starts to look like mashed potatoes or is the consistency of the tooth, toothpaste, um, then you've got a good mixture. You've got a good base going. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some liquid. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix that in. So this may not be enough liquid. 
In fact, I know that it's not enough liquid. I've been mixing henna for quite some time, so usually I just kind of eye it and I get it right the first time, but I intentionally put in less than what I would need because I want you to see what it looks like when you don't have enough liquid. So it's very crumbly. You can see that there are some dry spots and some wet spots. So we're gonna go ahead and add more liquid. It's just as easy as that. At this point, there isn't too much that you can do to ruin your henna paste. I mean, if, if you do end up putting too much liquid in, all you do is have to add more dry powder. It's really just that simple. So if I didn't mention it before I started mixing, I'm going to mention it now that during the process you should set aside some of your henna powder. Don't mix all of your henna powder in one batch at one time. Because if you do add too much liquid, then you don't have extra henna powder to add in if you've used all of it. So again, I'm going to add some liquid because we're still not at that toothpaste or mashed potatoes consistency. There's still some dry, crumbly bits in here. But we are getting close, though. Okay. Right. So I don't think we need too much more liquid. I think I'm at a pretty good place with the henna paste. There seems to be enough liquid here. I'm just going to keep mixing it until it's a little bit more smooth and less chunky. But you don't want to see any dry powdery bits or chunks in here because that means that you may need more liquid. But it looks like I've got plenty. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. We're going to add some essential oils. Okay, so I've got my measuring spoon here, and I typically don't add um, essential oils usually using a measuring spoon, but since this is a video for beginners, I'm going to go ahead and use a measuring spoon just to kind of give you an idea of how much you should put in. And then you can just kind of alter it depending on your personal taste. If you prefer to have henna that's not as strongly scented, then put in less essential oil. But if you prefer something that's uh, strongly scented or just about right, then you can kind of follow along where I'm going. So this is half a tablespoon. And that is silver on yellow, so it may be a little bit difficult to see. And then I've got eucalyptus oil. So I'm just going to go ahead and let me move this aside here and put some oil in here. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and pour that into my henna paste mixture here. And so that is an adequate amount, and this is approximately um, just over 25 grams of henna powder with um, a mixture of lemon juice and water, about 50% lemon juice, 50% water mixture, and then half a tablespoon of eucalyptus oil. And if I were eyeing it and just kind of pouring it in myself, that's about how much I would pour in. So when you put essential oil in, you're going to find that your paste starts to thin out a little bit. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So if your paste was slightly chunky to begin with, this essential oil is going to help to move those chunks and smooth them out. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix it in there really, really good. And that, we are almost complete with the henna paste. We're going to go ahead and let this go through a dye release process. I've already made a video about dye release, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I will link that video down below. So basically, dye release is the, um, the dye, the natural dye that's in the henna powder being released. And the essential oil and the acidity from the lemon juice does help to the henna paste to do that. And in order for you to have a successful, beautiful stain, you'll want to let your henna go through dye release. And so it's just something, it's a very simple, natural process. And um, it just needs to sit out in a warm area, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, typically what I do is I put it on top of an appliance that generates heat, like my refrigerator. I would not recommend heating 
your henna, do not put it in the microwave, do not put it inside the oven. Sometimes if I'm baking and I happen to be mixing henna paste, I will put henna, the henna paste on top of the oven because the oven is generating heat, but you also want to be careful that you're not baking your henna or getting it too hot because that could ruin the henna paste. Um, so generally, just letting it sit out. I Like I said, I put mine on top of the refrigerator and just let it sit. Dye release timelines for different henna powders will vary, and so um, I just recommend letting it sit anywhere from 12 to 24 hours, and that should do it. I'll go ahead and, like I said, link that video about um, dye release down in the information box if you're watching this on YouTube, and that should help you. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go through dye release, and we will come back a little bit later so you can see what the henna paste looks like, and then we'll talk about um, why we add sugar to our henna paste. So one thing that I meant to mention um, when you are setting your henna aside for dye release, if your container or your bowl does not have a lid that you can put on it, you'll want to put it in like a plastic bag and tie the plastic bag to prevent the henna from drying out. So I use these um, clear plastic bags that I put my fruit in when I go to the grocery store. And so I'm just going to go ahead and put the whole bowl inside the bag like so and then just tie a loose knot nothing too tight and that's pretty much it I'll pick this up so you can see what I've done a little bit better so that's it and you'll want to check on your henna periodically while it's going through dye release I'm going to go ahead and set mine out for about 12 hours which is um, what the my Rajasthani henna powder or needs to dye release fully so I will see you again in 12 hours. All right, everyone. So the henna has gone through its dye release. It set out a little bit longer than 12 hours. However, it's not really going to hurt anything. Um, I recommend 24 hours. Um, if you don't know how long your henna should be dye releasing, um, 24 hours is, is your best bet. But if your henna dye releases before that, it's no problem. If it sits out a little bit longer, it's not going to hurt it. Just as long as you don't leave it out for too long. So this is pretty much what our henna paste looks like. And this is a plastic bag that I put over it to keep it from drying out. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix it here. And it's very, very creamy. Very, very, very smooth. And if you notice while I'm mixing that there are some parts of the paste that are lighter and some that are darker, that's an indication that dye release has taken place. That's what it looks like but it doesn't always look that way for every henna powder but if you're using any powder that's from Asia or North Africa you're going to see that so as you can see all the lumps and the bumps that we had previously have worked themselves out it's extremely extremely silky smooth which is what you want and so we're going to go ahead and add our last bit which is the sugar and this is plain white table sugar it's nothing hard to find. It's available in your local grocery store. And you don't want to get sugar that's really, really chunky. Um, I know there's a couple of brands um, that have like brown sugar that's really chunky. You want to use something that is white and very finely milled. It's just really, really soft and has tiny little granules in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that just a tiny bit so I want you to see how much I added it's just a dusting over the top of the henna paste and then I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it in I want to caution you on using too much sugar because if you add too much sugar the henna paste will not dry when you put it on the skin which is not something that you want and also it can cause your henna to be really gummy and it can be hard to apply. So adding too much sugar can ruin your batch and you don't want to do that. So just a small amount of sugar is perfect. And you'll notice that it just kind of starts to drip really smoothly and that is kind of what we want. We don't want it to be super runny. We don't want it to be gummy and really super sticky. And the sugar helps when you're um, draping fine lines to uh, so the line doesn't break and I'll do a video on draping um, this one I really want to focus on the henna paste itself but um, it, it really helps with draping and doing fine details in henna if you have a little bit of sugar in there also if it's a really hot and dry day it can um, keep the henna from drying too quickly once you've applied it to the skin so that's an added bonus to that 
So that's really awesome. So that's pretty much it. Henna paste is really, really simple. And if you are strongly interested in henna body art or you're looking to go professional, I highly recommend learning to mix your own paste. Will your first batch of paste be perfect? Maybe, maybe not. But it just takes practice just like anything else. But like I've said before, if you can mix boxed cake and if you can mix pancake mix that you buy from the store, you can make your own henna paste. And the bonus to mixing your own henna paste is you know exactly what's in it and you have full control over how it's mixed, which oils you use, the consistency that you like best. What one henna artist likes their texture of henna paste to be may not be the same for another henna artist. I like mine thin and very creamy, but some henna artists like theirs a little bit thicker. So it's just all personal preference. Just play around with it and there isn't too much damage you can do. Um, the only two things that I want to caution you in doing is adding too much sugar or too much essential oil. Too much essential oil can irritate the skin and adding um, too much sugar can make it so it's so gummy that you can't really use it. It becomes way too sticky and you don't want it to be too sticky. You just want it to be creamy and able to drape very easily and so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments box below if you're watching this on YouTube or you're welcome to send me an email at info at freehandmindy.net. All the information is going to be in the down bar, including information on the henna that I used today's video. This is my Rajasthani henna, so it is available on my website. I thank you very much for watching, and there will be another segment um, for this henna paste. I will be using it for a design and showing you the stain, so please... Um, Watch my uh, videos carefully, subscribe, and you'll see that video coming up where I actually use this henna paste so you'll be able to see the stain. So like I said, subscribe, rate, comment, all that good stuff. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.